In case you forgot just how wicked and indescribably gnarly life in the wilderness can be, a new study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences has found that beetle secretions can make a rotting corpse an ideal nursery for its larva. So a lot of animal species, primarily arthropods like wasps and beetles, among others, are known to lay their eggs inside the body of another animal. Sometimes this is done as the animal is still alive. Sometimes it's done after it's dead. But either way, the end result is a mass of insect larva hatching inside of a larger mass of organic tissue, which is then consumed and turned into nutrients to fuel the larva's growth. When an animal dies, like a bird or a lizard or some kind of rodent, the processes of decay and rot will give off chemicals like cadaverine and putrescine. A lot of these post-death chemicals are named after something that has to do with death, or something that describes how the chemicals smell. Putrescine smells putrid. To non-scavengers, like us, this dead stuff smells terrible and it tells us to stay away. But to scavengers, these odors are enticing. This is the scent of food, and for others, a welcoming place to lay their eggs. The study examined beetles as they went about this process of finding something dead to lay its eggs in. The beetles would first approach the carcass, and then roll it up or drag it some distance away to a small hole that it dug in the ground. The beetles would then rip up the feathers, they'd rip off the scales or the fur of the carcass to get it out of the way, and then it would start digging out little chunks or cavities or uh, burrows into the flesh itself. As this goes on, the beetles are also covering the rotting carcass with various fluids that get secreted from both their mouth and their anus. Once the carcass has been deferred, partially shredded, and coated in these juicy secretions, the female beetle will lay her eggs in all of the little chunks and cavities that she dug out earlier. Within two days, the eggs will hatch, and the larva will begin to feed on the surrounding biomass. Now, many animals, and not just beetles, will eat dead stuff, and this can be a problem for the larva, when their food nursery gets eaten by other scavengers, be they some species of fungus, uh, some other animal scavenger, or just the regular bacteria in the dead tissue itself, breaking it down. If all of these other forces are left unchecked, the larva will see that their food is being eaten right out from under them, and that's bad for the beetles. It puts them off to kind of a rocky start. Now, this study identified the oral and anal secretions as a tool that the beetles use to protect and preserve the foodstuff, just for their larva. These secreted fluids that are coating the carcass are rich in not just beetle enzymes, but entire bacterial strains and fungal microbes that were all a part of this evolutionarily designed beetle ointment, or topical nursery cream. I don't know, there's, there's not really a good human analog for this stuff, and probably for good reason. I mean, that sounds like it would be disgusting. But anyway, this protective secretion inhibits the behavior of other bacteria and fungi that would otherwise break down the dead tissue for their own nutritional needs. These beetle juices contain antimicrobial compounds that can keep out unwanted species, and it serves as a layer of protection against other scavenging organisms by masking the scent of decay. The end result is that dead tissue treated with these beetle juices experienced a drastic reduction in its rate of decay. Even the odor of the dead tissue went away, as the beetle juices sealed in all of the rotting biomass to preserve it for their larva. This is super gross, but it's also super badass and it's really interesting. It also raises a question that definitely has a fascinating answer. How did this particular mixture of compounds evolve? where it seems to not only preserve the dead tissue and protect the larva, but also selectively regulates which bacteria and fungus can join in on the decomposition. This hints at an intensely intimate symbiotic relationship between these beetles and the bacteria and fungal microbes that they use in, in these juices. And I'm excited to see what future studies uncover about all of this.